everybody and welcome to the Pottery Corner, my studio on near Chichester on the south coast of England. Um, it's been really, really hot here and we're slightly, uh, slightly flaking from the heat. So uh, um, it's a good place to be in the kiln room, obviously, on a day when it's been absolutely stonking hot. So um, I'll get on with it without further ado. So we're doing a glaze firing kiln opening. Um, the kiln is down to 38 degrees centigrade um, and anything under 50 degrees is fine to open in terms of uh, glaze firing. Um, so I'm just going to turn off the uh, kiln supply, flick open the kiln. You know I've had a sneaky peek. You know I always do. I'm so naughty. Um, so let's get the kiln open. Uh, there are most mostly students working here. I'm pleased to say that we are... Um, we have started classes again, just with two students instead of four, um, just so that we can make sure that we're socially distancing um, as we should and that everybody feels comfortable in the studios, myself included. You know, nobody wants to, uh, to come to the studio and then find that they've passed it on to somebody else. And, and likewise, I don't want to, uh, to feel that I might pass it on to one of my students. So we are very well distanced in the studio, but it's so lovely to have you all back. I have missed you so much. Um, right, so as you can see on the shelves, there is work going on, which is what happens when you have your students back. They all start making things. Um, Jo's uh, made a little uh, poppy head to go with the two she's already made. Um, so that's waiting to be biscuit fired. Um, I've been making these little three-legged wonky pots. Wonky pots, I'm calling them, because um, I quite like the three legs, it makes them quirky, it gives them a personality. So these haven't been biscuit fired yet, um, but what I've done, I've slab built, it, hand, hand built these, so these are not thrown on the wheel. Um, and then I've, I've used my own texture sprigs, which I have a lot of, I make, I make a lot of um, sprigs because I like to have my own texture. I don't like to buy um, commercially made texture if I can make something myself, and as you can see, um, it does make a really lovely surface. And then um, today, when I was um, out and about, I, I bought this little fellow, this little fellow. I've named him Ian because, well, why not, actually? So um, a little succulent. Um, and when, obviously, this pot is, is glazed, um, I'll plant him up into here. But I thought they, they look really cute. And obviously succulents are something that people are keeping in their houses now, which is lovely. And I think once he's actually potted into the pot, he'll look really lovely in there. So um, I'll, I'll post some pictures and bits and pieces when they're finished. But obviously these aren't biscuit fired yet, so it's not going to be any time particularly soon. But um, as usual, I get a theme and then I just kind of work with the theme. So we start with a prototype and then we move on. Um, and this one has got slightly different texture on it. Um, where I've used um, a roller that I made with sort of, it almost looks like um, tiles, but one of the girls said it looked like a basket, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, but yes, yeah, so different textures, and obviously the glazes will hold in the textures when, um, when it's actually glazed. So I'm looking forward to seeing those when they're done. So let's get on with it, Sarah. Stop yakking. Uh, here we have one of my Tudor jugs. This is number four of five. Number five is behind me on the glaze shelf. This is Amoco's Celadon Cobalt, which is this really lovely deep blue. Um, and I put blue, blue rutile, Potter's Choice, uh, Amoco Potter's Choice blue rutile over the top. Um, and where it has pulled, it's really very nice. But actually, I think I've got a couple of patches that might need a little bit of a reglaze just on the top. This is iron fleck clay, so it has the nice sort of oatmeal-y um, texture inside, which is really nice. But that's pretty, nice, beautiful, um, bright blue. Um, so we'll, I might uh, think about doing a little bit of reglazing on there, but generally speaking, it's fine. Now, Karen, uh, whilst I'm talking about Karen, my marvellous and beautiful um, uh, logo, vinyl logo that Karen did for me. Karen's one of my students. She's been a long term student um, and she runs a company called Griffin Designs. And also she does um, fabric stickers for walls as well. So that's another line that she does um, and came this week and fitted this beautiful 
uh, vinyl on there. So AKA the Vinyl Queen. Thank you, Karen. It looks amazing. Right, so this is one of Karen's mushroom tops. And those of you who've watched my videos before will know. Um, I think that might be fog, but I could be wrong. I don't know the glaze combinations that my students use. But this little fella is going to go on top of this base. Now, this base has been oxided. It's crank clay, oxided, and she's used some glass frit, which when the water hits it, when it's outside in the garden, it will look very, very pretty. And this little fellow will sit on the top of here. Oh, look. Yeah, that's, that goes, Karen. And again, it's got that nice movement. I like the movement because it makes it, it, it gives it something else. So, yep, yeah, that's a goodie. So that goes on there. She'll be pleased when she comes tomorrow. Next item in the kiln, Carolyn, is your beautiful sphere. And I'm hoping it's not actually attached to the shelf below. It's not, but it is slightly. Oh no, that's fine. It's come off. The cookies come off. We know what cookies do, don't we? Protect the kiln shelves. Um, so this is Carolyn's uh, sphere. I don't know what you'd call that. Ur urchin, perhaps? I'm actually going to take my glove off so I can make sure I hold it properly. Um, it's beautiful. So this is Amoco Potter's Choice Obsidian underneath um, Indigo Float with Ancient Jasper sort of drizzled, I think I'd probably say, on the top. And where the Jasper has pulled, I hope you can see that. It actually, it's lovely, really lovely. And the whole thing is this really deep blue. So that, Carolyn, is a spectacular piece. And whilst it may take you time to do your pieces, the standard is really exceptional. I mean, if that was my piece, I'd be utterly delighted with it. So it really is beautiful. And she's starting again in a couple of weeks. So well done, Carolyn. That's a lovely thing. And I quite like that it's, it's off centre. Works very well. Exceptional. Well done. Uh, this is a glazed test tile. I don't know why. That one is um, Amoco Potter's Choice Frosted Turquoise. Um, I just did another tile of that because the one that I have upstairs has got a, it's got um, some oxide blown across it from something else. So I wanted a, a true representation. I'm not a mad fan of matte glazes. They're not really my thing, but you know, some people like them and actually sometimes there are things that you want to put a matte glaze on. So I'm just going to take out, I've got a little half shelf in here. It's a bit of a funny load, um, this kiln. I had sort of bits and pieces that have needed to be done. So there's a little bit of everything in here. Ooh, lovely. Right, so little half shelves out. You know what we're going to take out next, don't you? Props. Because props do not make prizes. Uh, this is dies. Um, see, I've, I've stood this on a prop and it's just not going to come off without a knock with a hammer. This is Crank and it's um, she's put some leaves, cut out some uh, leaf, leaves and then oxided the leaves rather than glazing them. So the rest of the bowl is glazed. I'm not sure if she's going to use this in the garden. I think she might be. This is Amoco's Fog on here and Fog inside. So she could put it out in the garden as like a bird bath. Um, so, I mean, quite a nice bath for your birds. Um, but I do love this um, leaving the crank just oxided. And as I say, I will just knock that prop off. It's just where it's been in the kiln, where it's loaded. So dye, that is very nice. Very nice indeed. Pop that there. Uh, right, let's see what else is in here. And I'm just trying to move the props out of the way because I hate the props. They have a nasty. Oh, <laughs> Janet. Janet makes these lovely little gourds and they're so sweet. And uh, this one has got palladium leaves across the top, as you can see, with its stalk. And look how that palladium has drizzled down there. I mean, you couldn't, 
you couldn't do that if you tried and it is absolutely beautiful and the palladium has got such a mirror finish on it wow 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 i don't know what the base glaze is it looks like it could be glacier i would say from a guess um pot, uh, potter's choice glacier celadon glaze glacier now this one is um, oatmeal background with um, seaweed ivy leaves and again beautiful and again Janet she has she has such lovely she finishes her pieces so lovely all the edges are all smooth and yeah she's a she's a very good pottery pottery technician that's for sure she she does a good job of finishing off her things and the combination of the um, uh, oatmeal and the seaweed together is really nice and actually in places on it Janet you've got the veining on the leaves which I mean it is really lovely they're really really nice and when you put them together as a set because they're all different they all kind of come together as a set so this is the next of them all right this one's on a on a prop which I will have to knock off and again very nice she's put some uh, cobalt oxide on the top of this one um, and that's a mix of mulberry and snow and it looks like downpour that looks like downpour to me so again you know a lovely good fantasy good or whatever you want to call it I'll need to knock the um, prop off of that one and the last one is more on a seasidey theme and this one is oh that's good the prop came off that one that's good this one is a marigold background for the sand and snapdragon uh, starfish and the mulberry and snow mix there and I think we went with lustrous jade in the end you'll tell me if I'm wrong the lustrous jade has moved a bit but actually it doesn't detract nice little thing and when you see them all together as a little set they're really very sweet so that's those uh, I'm just going to make a bit of room for the monster that is about to appear which is the last thing in this kiln um, and this is Karen's largest mushroom base for the large mushroom that we had in the last firing and <laughs> as you can see it's very large it's almost as tall as my kiln um, so again this is the base for the mushroom top and the the glass on there again Karen very nice I love the way it just kind of sits in the pools almost looks like sort of moss which I presume is the is the thing and uh, she's oxided it darker on the base than it is on the stand and then this which is um, again crank smoky merlot as as Karen said I know you can see the the texture of the glaze it, it looks like lichen and it's really beautiful I mean it's a really good effect. I bet you couldn't do it twice. And this one is going to go on the top of here. Now I'm not going to let him go because I want Karen to place him. He's going to need a little bit of um, moving around to make sure he fits on there. But that's, that's where he's going to go. And actually, really nice in the garden. You know, kind of in your, in your borders when they're in the winter. It'd be nice to sort of stumble across it and think, oh, where did that come from? So yes, yeah, very nice um, and a good proportion between the top and the base. So nice big base for a nice big top. Right, so that's your lot today. Um, as I say, the courses are carrying on and we're back having fun with clay. So um, here's my six second not trimming it off. Need to go on a course to learn how to um, edit. Can't do that. It's much too difficult for somebody my age. So I'll sign out and say... GoPro, stop video.